A new family roller coaster is coming to Busch Gardens Tampa Bay in Florida next year. In this Theme Park Worldwide news update, I'll be sharing all of the details that we know so far about Phoenix Rising, this new coaster opening in 2024 at the park. Now, of course, Busch Gardens Tampa Bay has already got an absolutely amazing coaster lineup. They've got nine roller coasters at the park, including some of the biggest and best thrill rides anywhere in the world. Every time we go to Florida, we always make the trip down to Busch Gardens because we love their heavy coaster lineup. And along with that, the park is beautiful. It's a large park, it's well themed. It's got a nice mix of attractions for everyone. And it's great to see the constant investment in new rides. In fact, we was at Busch Gardens only a few weeks ago on our recent Florida trip. So make sure you check out the vlog if you haven't already seen it. You can see on ride POV some all the different rides. And we also tried out Serengeti Flyer, which is the new SNS screaming swing for this year. So that's the thing, every year they're making new investments into the park. And you know what? I'm really looking forward to this. A new family coaster coming into Bush. And that's the thing. It's not all about big thrill rides all the time. It's a nice, well-balanced park. And it's good to see them thinking the next thing we need to put in is a family coaster, especially after a few of the thrill investments uh, that have gone into Bush Gardens as well. Now, I love the name for this. It's going to be called Phoenix Rising. And this is actually set to be a B&M family inverted coaster. Now, let me talk a little bit about that model, because obviously these past kind of couple of years, we've seen b &M really starting to create new things, especially when it comes to the family coasters. However, uh, the first one of this model actually opened in China at Happy Valley back in 2014. And I've actually seen this one in person. Sadly, I didn't get to ride it because it was closed. But so uh, yeah, back in 2017, when I did my Asia trip, uh, I went to Happy Valley in China. I was hoping to get on this with it being quite unique. It was the only one at its time. And um, another one opened after that. Uh, and then of course, this will be the third version. Um, but yeah, I was hoping to ride it to see what it was like but still I saw it in person and back then it was the world's only B&M family coaster. Of course we've got a few more now with the new one that's opening uh, Penguin Trek at SeaWorld Orlando. Check out the news update from a few days ago if you haven't already seen it and of course Mandrill Mayhem uh, here at Chessington in the UK. We're seeing B&M start a lot more now with family coasters um, but yeah it's nice to see uh, this version kind of coming back again this model and it's going to work really nice in Bush Gardens. Now with this, like I say, it's going to be the 10th coaster at the park. It's going to be located within the Pantopia themed area. Now, Pantopia is also home to Scorpion, great classic coaster. You've got Falcon's Fury, which is the tilting drop tower there. And you used to have Sand Serpent there as well, which is a wild mouse coaster. That closed earlier this year. It's been completely removed. And we saw that when we was there a few weeks ago in person. And so uh, yeah, that is going to be the site of Phoenix Rising. So it's a really good place actually, because you've got Scorpion, which is a thrill coaster. Of course, the big thrilling drop tower. Um, and then yeah, this uh, a replacement family coaster for Sand Serpent. Of course, that was more of a standard layout ride. Uh, what we're seeing here, here. Um, it's a custom layout, it's quite unique, and it's going to fit in really well um, to the Pantopia area of the park. So yeah, quite interesting. The third one of these to be built, but actually the longest, because uh, like I say, the ones out in China, that's where both of them are, um, are a little bit shorter um, than this one. So yeah, what's quite interesting with this is the length for it. Um, it's actually going to be 1,831 foot long. Uh, it's going to feature a lift deal, various drops, turns, and helixes with a top speed of 44 miles an hour. Now what I really do like about this is they've said in the release yesterday you're going to soar over the Serengeti plane and yeah we can see that it's going to be quite nicely landscaped and themed from the concept art. I'm loving the look of that overbank turn over the actual entrance to the queue line. I think that looks fantastic. And we also get a closer look at what the train is gonna look like on there as well. Um, because as you can see, with this being a family invert, it only features two across per row instead of a bigger invert, um, like Monty, for example, which is in the same park, um, that's got four across. Um, so yeah, that's the thing here. We're seeing B&M kind of adapt their coasters and try different things now they're kind of entering the family market. And I say that, the more re-entering it, it's been nine years since they opened um, the first family inverts, but no one else is really buying them other than the two in China. So it's good to see them kind of pushing these a bit more. And, uh, you know, I think it's good to be competitive. Just because B&M create amazing thrill rides doesn't mean they can't create fantastic family coasters too. And it's a big market now, so I can see exactly why they're wanting to go down it. Um, but yeah, I do like the look um, of the trains on this. I was hoping I was going to get to ride it at Happy Valley, but I never did. But uh, I did see the trains. They're so small, so cute, and they look very similar for this one. What's quite interesting is, on the 
the concept art is it looks like there's lights underneath. I'm not too sure if there will be, but um, it looks like there's some lighting underneath. The only other B&M invert to have that is Monster at Groner Lund in Sweden, and that looks great at night. And the thing is with Bush Gardens, it does open at night quite a bit. So maybe it will benefit from having a lighting package like that installed underneath the trains. Um, possibly so, but uh, yeah, you can kind of see that uh, on the overbank on the train there. It could just be the light reflecting the, the lovely Florida sunshine, or maybe it is a lighting package. I'm not too sure. Something we do know though, is that it's going to actually have onboard audio. It'll be the first coaster at Busch Gardens to feature that. And uh, you know me, I love onboard sound. It can take coasters to the next level. Think the ride to happiness at Plops Land de Pan in Belgium, one of the best coasters in the world. It wouldn't be that without the soundtrack. I mean, it's a good solid coaster, but the onboard sound really adds to it. So. I'm pleased to see Bush going down that route. And just in general, starting to think about theming a little bit more. Some of the past investments at Bush Gardens and SeaWorld, of course, they're all owned by the same company. Um, we've seen a lack of theming and creativity. We've got the rides, but not the full package. Seems like they're going more down that route now. They've spent the money here on onboard sound, um, which they didn't need to do. So uh, that to me shows they want to be this themed experience still, instead of just an amusement park chucking in rides here and there. You know, So I do like that. Um, but yeah, you're going to soar above the Serengeti plane and uh, yeah the layout itself looks quite nice and like I said about 1800 feet of track uh, which is fantastic. In terms of other theming the station looks nice it fits the kind of theme and uh, colour scheme of Pantopia the land that it's in a uh, very kind of vibrant colourful area that actually opened in 2014 uh, it was a retheme of a former area it all got painted up um, when Falcon's Fury opened the drop tower. Blimey that'll be 10 years old next year that's mad um, but yeah along with that it looks like you've got these big two entrance structures the, the entrance portal and uh, yeah, you're gonna have like two flame effects on there by the looks of it. Again, not sure if that'll be real fire or just an effect, but you can definitely see like the bowls for the flame torches um, on either side just there. Um, but overall, that's all we know so far. I think it looks like it'll be a great addition. And like I say, it's a well balanced park. So it's nice to see them, um, not just thinking about the big thrill rides, you know, putting in the family stuff as well. That's what Bush Gardens has and always will be about. You go into the history of that park, um, you know, it was very much a family park. So it's nice to see them being really careful with their investments and making sure um, they don't kind of single one market out and just focus on something there for everyone. Put in a thrill ride, put in a flat ride, uh, and then of course put in a family coaster. I think though going forward, I would love to see Bush Gardens build something indoors. Um, I think an indoor coaster or a dark ride is m very much needed at that park. Of course, if you go in stormy season or hurricane season out there to Florida, um, you know, a lot of rides can close due to storms. And you go to Bush Gardens on a stormy day because everything's outside, everything closes. So I do think the benefit from having something indoors in the future, I'd like that to be the next investment. There's a lot of rumors that something bigger could be on the horizon for 2025 at Bush, um, but we will see what happens. And of course, we'll keep you updated with all the latest theme park news here on Theme Park Worldwide. Well, I'm Sean Sandbrook. Thank you very much for watching. And that leaves me with one final thing to say. Get out there and keep on riding. We'll see you in the next video.